guys welcome to my channel to my video i taken a two day break or three day break i do that to recharge my energies and batteries here i am with a new video which is again talking about imputed righteousness guys we uh, we have all been to our churches for years hopefully many years uh, and sitting through the sermons and we have been repeatedly taught its imputed righteousness which is basically a heresy a blasphemy it's a blasphemy it's a heresy of paul paul the antichrist paul I, it's becoming now known to the christian world i'll take a minute to praise god thank you lord for now the awareness is coming we have worked very hard ones like me there are others also who are working but when i started for 3 4 years back there was almost nobody on the horizon who was teaching paul was a deceiver and now many are teaching what a pleasure it's a burden of me it was a personal war against this fake apostle this antichrist paul now we are close to victory guys so i'm really pounding it home like when you sense victory you get more exuberant you become more aggressively i am pounding the uh, heresies of the fake apostle paul now some names i would like to uh, take off my memory the people who have fought for years one of them is my friend uh, marty kozad from the uh, county or state of uh, nebraska and there is a there's a lady called flora from florida flora from florida she is fighting also the deceptions of all there are many others a gentleman called matthew i do not know but he is doing good work many are sprouting good job guys let's take the victory home to the lord to whom it belongs let his doctrine be taught of salvation not this said by grace through faith and not by works lest no man may boast and that the righteousness of we are born sinners we are nothing our uh, you know our righteousness is filthy rags this was cherry picked from places in bible by but of course he won't tell you the context of it and then brought like uh, it together and he sowed his own doctrine of uh, let's say a heresy a blasphemy said by grace through faith like i have mentioned repeatedly grace is a word jesus never even utters in the bible in any of the major translations or you tell me like king james new king james or uh, nasb or niv whichever tell me one of these bigger ones why didn't they record the word grace coming out of jesus mouth how will you be saved by grace through faith and not by works lest no man may boast ephesians 289 now in i just wanted you to like um, refresh your memory why am i talking about this you know because we are close to victory guys i'll take another minute to thank praise god lord thank you so much because i am seeing a change happening a paradigm shift taking place the, the pastors teachers with so many people have realized that one second guys paradigm shift has taken place with the pastors and teachers sneakily shall i say or clandestinely or discreetly moving from said by grace through faith to first time in hundreds of years many are not talking about obedience and its direct link connection with salvation which paul had severed or cut off completely chopped it he started talking of saved by grace through faith and not by works he didn't want us to be righteous he didn't want us to be obedient to father god and the son of god jesus christ jesus says six times in the last supper moments before he went to the cross that if you love me keep my command six times you are not my friend if you are not keeping my commands john 15 14 these pastors these uh, verses pastors won't teach in fact they won't even teach much of the gospel they would be they would play safe and uh, go around paul's words very evil things were happening i would still give them a benefit of doubt they were also deceived but if i am pastoring a church and if i am conscientious i will say there is too much too much of uh, contradiction and i've started a new series series glaring contradictions between the 
teachings of Paul and the words of our Lord Jesus. It's like opposite. Mm. Yet they survived 500 years after this Protestant church came into existence, led by ones like Martin Luther, who thumbed the Bible at the table that you cannot be saved by words. Yes, we are only saved by words. What you sow, you shall reap. This is the basis of the justice of Father God, which Jesus implemented. That's why he says, you're not my friend if you're not willing to obey me. All right. Now, guys, with this in mind, we will jump straight to the very context of this video, Imputed Righteousness. This is the second time I am recording this because it's very, very serious, guys. We cannot run away from the truth. Paul's statement in Romans 4 says that God imputes righteousness apart from works. Remember, all this is all this heresies, blasphemies, which will lead to multiple uh, condemnations comes from this imputed right imputes like Romans 4 6 for example I just quoted Ephesians 2 8 9 you say by grace through faith and not by works lest no man may boast and here Paul says in Romans 4 6 that's two because there's abundance of this Paul was hammering it home as I am that this man is a deceiver he was hammering home that you have been saved by grace through faith a word Jesus never taught or used on the day of judgment he didn't guys he didn't use, he rejected this. I'll come to that a little later, okay? Stick to the video, like, should be less than 20 minutes. Little uh, Paul's statement in Romans 4, 6 says that God imputes righteousness apart from works. So I've just given you two uh, major uh, verses of Paul around which this doctrine, and you must have experienced, you must have tasted this heresy at the churches. That you, that you cannot be righteous on your own. All this is nothing but what? Heresy. Why? Because how is the King Josiah righteous? Held by Father God. Because he didn't turn to the left. He didn't turn to the right. He walked in obedience. How was his son? Or his grandfather Hezekiah. How was King Hezekiah held righteous? How was Noah held righteous? How was Zachariah held righteous? How was John the Baptist held righteous by Jesus Christ? Because they obeyed. So, uh, Jesus was nowhere in the horizon when these guys were doing their ministry or their work or they were kings, but they were obedient, right? So, there are multiple examples, including father and mother of Zachariah, uh, John the Baptist were held righteous. It says, the word says, Jesus wasn't there. It is because they choose to uh, walk in obedience. That's where righteousness comes from. And what is righteousness? By the way, it's simple. Righteousness is doing the right thing right away, like without hesitation, till it becomes a second nature. Father God wants to, us to do that. Jesus wants us to be like him, righteous to the bone. What does he say when John the ba uh, Baptist say, I'm not even worthy of tying your shoelaces? He says, no, no, let it be so. Let us fulfill all righteousness. He has come to teach and obey righteousness. And here is this man talking about imputed righteousness. There is no greater deception in the Bible than this. There is nothing called imputed righteousness. And this led to multiple large scale condemnation on the day of judgment guys. Okay. So uh, let us go forward now. And we just read about. Uh, Paul's lies in Romans 4, 6 that God imputes righteousness apart from works. Works he does not consider. <laughs> in fact, it's the opposite. Jesus only considered works because he does what the Father wills. What is Father will? What you sow, you shall reap. This principle, remember my words, will work out throughout your life and on the day of judgment. What? That's why he's impartial, guys. Don't you get it? He's neutral. He's impartial because we get what we sow. And that happened on the day of judgment. That happened is because Jesus let us know. Revelation 20, 11 to 15. Write this down and read it. And read after that Matthew 25, 31, 46. These are two very clear accounts of the last day events. Only works were used. Works of righteousness. And it even tells us Matthew 25, 31, 46. Who were held to be righteousness who were righteous and because of what they had done was one word in Hindi Karuna K-A-R-U-N-A but don't get be fertile in English simple loving compassion or loving kindness two words with a hyphen 
That's all. As simple as that. If you're going to turn away from sin, reject sin willingly, consciously, and move to what? Righteousness. Practicing loving kindness, which is of course the high, high of uh, Mount Everest of all righteousnesses, unconditional works of loving compassion, like the Good Samaritan. Those guys were saved. This was rejected, guys. My question, um, apart from this imputed righteousness, is how do, uh, how can anybody argue that Jesus will change this to suit Paul? A name he never used in the doctrine like he didn't uh, in the New Testament or in Bible. The word Paul didn't come out of his mouth. He didn't ever mention the word Paul. He didn't ever mention the word grace. Neither did he use saved by grace through faith on the last day. Matthew 25, 31, 46. Read with Revelation 20, 11, 15. Read that. Paste it on your... Somewhere you can read like I can read this. I've written this. Sin I will not. I made an acronym so I do not sin. It's a will, will, uh, willful effort to not sin. Everything man and God works work in tandem guys. Paul chopped off man's effort apart from faith. Now go home, relax, you got your visa to heaven, you became a citizen of heaven, everything has been forgiven, nothing has happened. Because that was rejected on the day of judgment. Read these two accounts. What was used was works in Jesus. Apart from that, apart from these two, once, couple of times in Revelation, my, my recompense is in my hands and I shall give to each of you according to what you have done or not done. The ones who were rejected, it's a shocking thing. The goats had no works of loving compassion. Not that they were willful sinners. But even they, were, they fell short because of they didn't have works. They could be okay people. Not necessarily sinners. But they, they had kind of apathy for others. They didn't care. That was deemed as sin and they were condemned. Guys, it's going to be very hard. I don't want to scare you, but this is what the Bible teaches us. You have to learn. You means you and I. I'm in the same boat. What, what's all this? What is all this going on? It's a reminder. It's on the wall of my living room. So I, when I wake up, I remind myself, Raj, do not sin today. And if I sin, I'm so broken. I'm like nose on the floor. Lord, please help me. Please forgive me. Please, I will fight it more. Give me another chance. He, he doesn't like this. The sinning soul shall die. Ezekiel says, it must perish. Father God has zero tolerance for sin, guys. Remember, keep it in the back of your mind in everything before you do some kind of sin. Any kind. And especially bigger ones. There are smaller ones and there are bigger ones. Alright. Let's see what John says to Paul's statements that God imputes righteousness apart from works. John is not talking and exposing Paul directly here without naming him or when they canonize this evil people like what is his name Constantine and company they took out the name if he was but it looks very direct attack on Paul like James 2 you read James 2 he's directly attacking everything uh, Paul had written because this was the brother of Jesus Christ he knew his brother is being attacked his doctrine has been attacked and has been destroyed but this bloody antichrist called Paul, which I put videos, and his damning confessions also of Apostle Paul, so-called Apostle Paul, who Jesus never called an apostle, neither did any of the other brothers, or I mean other apostles ever called Paul an apostle. And Peter, do not try to hide behind 2 Peter 3.16. In 2 Peter 3.17, Peter is warning us against the deceptions of Paul, which people do not know. They don't read that. I have exposed that also. I have left no stone unturned for the new generation coming after me. I am a man who is going, who's going over the hill. Who is probably over the hill. I am 62 almost. I, my family longevity. My mom lived up to 92. My dad, grandfather. The men in our family perish in 60s. I can go any day. 
so it it is was my burning desire to put all this and there are 300 videos guys praise god please download any of them as many as you like use them passing the button to you this was a very personal war with nothing to gain for me personally but it was for the lord and my personal desire was to expose this fake apostle so the new generations are equipped with what truth of jesus that jesus may be taught that his words may take the highest prominence he himself says in john 13 i believe 16 that no messenger is greater than the one who sent him and no uh, slave is greater than the master or servant he says put my words before he is the messiah he died for us guys why did we put this bloody paul who jesus never called him an apostle and uh, never mentioned his word name paul neither did his uh, 12 ever call paul an apostle tell me where if they're saying beloved brother uh, there's only this uh, peter's thing second peter 316 but what about second peter 317 he's warning us against this fake apostle who's and whose insane words he couldn't understand if Peter cannot understand his words, what can we understand? Tell me. I don't want to go into that. 2 Peter 3.17 implicates Paul. Anyway, going further, John is warning us in 1 John 3.7, Let little children, let no one deceive you. He who practices righteousness is righteous. You got the definition guys? It's all about action. Works. And he says, just as Jesus is righteous. So, if you're, if you're not practicing righteous, you will not be held righteous. And that's precisely what happened. Because these are chosen uh, apostles of Jesus. They don't go wrong. This bloody Paul who uh, appointed and crowned himself an apostle. Who called him an apostle uh, out of these twelve? Not one. Did Jesus even mention the name of uh, Paul, no. How did he become an apostle? Through a conversion story which, which you and I got deceived. No. Who are the witnesses? Nobody. For this murderer, blasphemer who claims suddenly that an angel of light, who devil appeared to him. And Lord, Lord, <laughs> what a bunch of baloney. And no witnesses where, where there is a dictat in Bible, there is a written order that Without the testimony of two or three, no fact will be established. And one other person who says this is Moses, the second person is Jesus, and there is the third person, Paul. And he himself has no witnesses. In Corinthians, he says, everything should be established by two or three witnesses. Where are your two or three credible witnesses, Paul? I, Rajesh Sahu, can claim that I, I, Jesus appeared. Look, he's sitting with me there and he's telling me to teach this. I should have witnesses. That too credible, right? Nobody. Anyway, going further, in Galatians 2.21, uh, 2 uh, Paul says, I do not set aside the grace of God, for if righteousness could be gained through the law, Christ died for nothing. So this, these are the kind of uh, heresies with emotional plea that if you are going to accept that uh, righteousness could be gained through obedience Christ died for nothing really Paul then why did he reject your doctrine on the day of judgment my dear Polly wily Polly huh? why can anybody answer tell me you guys have wisdom you guys have used logic I hope you guys are using, using good reason sense logic how can we accept a rejected doctrine. This was rejected on the day of judgment. Simply because Jesus the judge that did not teach it. Matthew 25. Third time I am repeating. Matthew 25, 30 and 46 called goats and sheep. Judgment day vision. This I chain. In all those. Some of them in these uh, versions. They used to write parable at one point in time. Or if they were not. They were being called parable. This in the church, I said, where is it a parable? He's telling you clearly when I come in my glory, sit with my, on the cha chair of judge when he's in fury and power, Jesus. It's a direct last revision. Now I see change. 
then why did you teach Paul? This is the direct contravention of or contradiction of Paul's crap of said by grace through faith. Now tell me guys, how can uh, the righteousness be imputed hmm? when he's going to use the criteria of works, works of what? Karuna, loving compassion if you will, loving kindness if you will. Have that because he'll be seeing what is your uh, quotient of righteousness in you works how much love do you have in your heart are you reflecting Jesus or not father God will be saying if you're not he doesn't want us he, he'll reject us left right and center how can you uh, allow how will Jesus allow in his father's sanctuary ones who have no righteousness in them because that's what Paul wanted, it's imputed. Jesus never taught all this baloney, this crap, this nonsense, this rubbish. He didn't, guys. It's time to wake up. But moving from here, I'll quote one of John 3.36 and you will know that we were deceived. See, John 3.16 is taught to us, that's cherry picked, of course. Jesus says that I have, let me read John 3.16 to you. God, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. But these same guys who teach us, the pastors, hide John 3.36 which exposes Paul completely. What does John 3.36, 20 verse below John 3.16. He says, and I'm quoting NASP and 20 others because the catch word is not obey. Okay, remember that and check it out in the Greek lexicon. Some have some of these versions like NIV have tried to shield Paul because it goes directly against Paul. So while they are translating, they say this is not what we are teaching in the churches. Sir, it is not your job to change. <laughs> Whoever did was very evil. Anyway, we won't go. That will take another one hour. John 3.36, NASB, John 3.36, ESV, these kind of words. And the Greek original text has not obey, okay? Here goes. Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life. John the Baptist is saying that and he gives a thumbs up to Jesus' word, John 3.16. He does. But look what he says next. There's a caveat. Like Jesus says, if you love me, keep my commands. If you love me, obey me. That's what he's saying now. Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life. Whoever does not obey the Son shall not see life. But the wrath of God remains on that person. Whoever does not obey the Son. This is the word in the Greek lexicon. There is no escape. It's either Paul or this man. John the Baptist held to be the greatest person born. One of the greatest men born of the womb of a woman woman Jesus says this man who had nothing to gain but the love of father he was Elijah did you know that reincarnated as John Jesus says if you are to accept he is the Elijah to come because Elijah never came is the Bible wrong no he came as John anyway that kind of righteousness he has whoever believes in the son has eternal life but whoever does not obey the son shall not see life but the wrath of God remains on that person Got it guys, there is nothing called imputed righteousness. If you have been deceived, like we were all, please today change and walk in righteousness. Intentionally, deliberately, purposely, consciously. Why? Because, I will quote again, John says, little children, let John the apostle, beloved apostle, let no one deceive you. Let Paul not deceive you. He who practices righteousness is righteous. Just as he, the Lord Jesus, is righteous. There is nothing called imputed righteousness, guys. And based on that, there was a lot of rejections. Again, the fourth time I'm telling you. Matthew 25, 31, 46. Read that. But before that, Revelation 20, 11, 15. And remember Jesus' caveat that... My recompense in Revelation, book of Revelation, that my, cave, uh, my uh, recompense is in my hands. I shall give to each one of you according to what you have done. I will also take you and close on this. Matthew 5 to 7, the 
legendary sermon on the mount which got people to jesus like me i found it in gandhi's book in india when i was a hindu and I, that's my first uh, some kind of exposure to christianity that then after i came to lancaster california and the church was very good it was a non denominational bible based church founded by nasa engineers and big shots from nasa who wanted intellectually except in the sense they wanted every verse to be expressed well while being taught when whoever was teaching they used to say give us the verse not your feelings which is a good thing so that nobody gives but they were all pauline all around paul anyway so after the end of uh, sermon on the mount jesus issues a stern warning whoever i'll paraphrase you read it is the end of the chapter of seventh chapter the end of the sermon on the mount whoever obeys listens to and obeys everything he is like a wise man wise builder when the storm came and the winds lashed it stayed firm those who will obey will stay firm on the day of judgment but and they will be saved is what he is saying and that's what happened matthew 25 31 46 that obeyed everything because love covers all sins say solomon says peter was peter for it solomon in so, uh, proverbs 10 and jesus matthew 22 37 40 this was the untaught salvation doctrine of christ jesus matthew 22 37 40 love god love others love god love others that was matthew 7 12 the golden rule to to others as you would want them to do to you for this is the law and the prophets he can't be clearer than that there are two other places won't go into that thank you so much guys for watching this video there's nothing called imputed righteousness this is again and again i'm making this plea and if somebody can explain me how this will be changed how why jesus will change the last day uh, judgment day scenarios please tell me and i'll stop teaching and if you're going to suspect jesus and place paul you have to choose because this is opposite one is day one is night night one is bitter one is sweet choose one anyhow with this i would like to end my little uh, video not very little 27 minutes please see other teachers who are teaching also marty kozak there is christina from uh, uh, i believe the east state one of the eastern states she has come up very nicely the sister flora from florida the sister sunshine from the state of arkansas these guys are working and there are so many matthew there are so many who are coming up so exciting we are getting into a new era where jesus will be taught for the first time his words will be given the highest prominence this man paul will be remembered always from now on as a wretched uh, deceiver the antichrist predicted to come this man was that All right guys thank you god bless you bye for now